Yeah. All right. It's early morning. You gotta, sometimes you gotta rise early. The early bird gets the uh, chat with Cody in New Zealand. That's the way it goes. So I'll be the bird. He'll be the worm. But uh, the truth of the matter is it's a big, big treat. And uh, my name is Uri Schneider, your host and guest, uh, host for Transcending Stuttering and uh, lead at Schneider's speech. And you can check out all these conversations in case you're catching this later or you know someone who's sleeping who can't watch it now uh, at schneiderspeech.com slash our blog um, or schneiderspeech.com slash TSA. Um, but it's a big treat. It's uh, not many people have given us the opportunity and not many people do we chase as hard to get a second, third, fourth meeting with. So Cody, it's been a, it's been a big treat. I think for me, finding the, uh, the silver lining in this whole last year among them is definitely getting to know you and getting to, to do so many of the meetups we did with young people and adults who stutter and just developing this really great connection with you. Um, for those that don't know, Cody is a proud person who stutters. He is a man on a mission. He is a creative, he's a filmmaker. He came onto the scene and onto our radar with his first film, um, First Day, which is a short film of um, enormous proportions. And you should check it out. It's on every platform you can imagine. And you can check it out on the blog page as well at Schneider's Speech. And then recently, uh, he kind of found himself not in LA, but back in New Zealand. He's a Kiwi, if you couldn't tell. And uh, as soon as he starts talking, you might realize. So he realized there was um, an opportunity and he'll talk more about that, but he made a film with young people who stutter in New Zealand. And it's kind of only born out of the fact that he's back home in New Zealand. Um, so he's continuing to, to, to do things in other parts of his career, but he's also had a chance to dive into his, his homeland and the community of stuttering that is, um, that is there and that is growing and how he's contributing to that. And he's also been recognizing the power of mindfulness in his own journey and creating opportunities for other people around the world to tap into groups for people who stutter to tap, tap into the power of mindfulness. So I hope we'll get to talk about the film. We'll talk about New Zealand where I heard they just had a massive rock concert with like 50,000 people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and the film and just what you're up to and mindfulness. So great to have you, man. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you, man. So, so great to be with you uh, as usual. And uh, yeah, um, appreciate everything you're doing with this. And uh, so honored to be a guest on it and to just have a chat. I want to bring some light laughter energy to this hour or however long it is um yeah laughter is a big thing for me at, at at the moment i feel like some of this work can get a little bit um serious and like oh like we need to like you know like we need to get down to it and we need to uh you know like when you're on a mission and i think we need to stop and just remember to have some fun <laughs> you know like oh. you know everything should be enjoyable and um yeah so a lot of reflecting on that recently um but yeah man thank you so much for creating the space and all the other guests you've had on uh have been so incredible in their own ways and um excited to be a part of it and um yeah thank you for your kind words too they really go to my heart today totally well i'll be open too you know behind the scenes, we all have our strong moments and we all have our goofy moments and we've shared lots of laughs. And we've also had the opportunity to kind of check in and be like, hey, how you doing, man? And actually give an honest answer. And I cherish that because some people, they ask, how you doing? They don't really care how you doing. And I know that when you ask, you really care. And I appreciate that, you know, even before we just popped on, I was able to share with you, not in the strongest state, but hey, I'm going to do what I can to grab a little five minutes to ground myself and get in a strong state because it's showtime for you and it's showtime for others. And, and over the course of today, I do have some things planned to kind of take care of myself. So again, just modeling imperfection, modeling that self-awareness and modeling, hey, we all need to lean on people that we know care about us and know that we're not in this alone and to take care of ourselves and take time for ourselves. So I, I apologize that we're a few minutes late. But I just wanted to share on that note, 
and then we'll jump in. But I think it ties into what Cody just said about, we also have to remember to laugh because some of this stuff can get a little heavy. Check this out. I was listening to Tim Ferriss's latest episode and uh, I just shared this with our transcending stuttering cohort of speech language pathologists with Craig McEwen. You know Craig McEwen? I don't actually, no. I will All right, up. so it's Tim Ferriss's, the Tim Ferriss Show. It's the latest episode, episode 510. So this guy is obviously a thought leader, uh, a very, very thoughtful, intelligent guy, but it threw me for a curveball when within the first 20 minutes, his guest, Greg McEwen, said the following. He basically started talking about a painting and he started getting emotional. And then he shared the following story, which I'm not gonna go too deep into, but basically taking care of one of his kids, there was a turnaround in their health and their development. And like for the past two years, they're looking for a diagnosis and nobody knows what's going on. And it's a really rough ride, right? As a parent. But he said he's come out of these two years through the ups and the downs, through the roller coaster, aside from COVID, dealing with caring for this child. And I think it speaks to what you just said about like, sometimes we deal with heavy things. So this is what Greg said. He said, coming out of it, he says, I've realized there's a harder path and there's a lighter path. And you can always make something harder by your response. And you can always make something easier and lighter by your response. It doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean it's light, but your response to that reality that you're going through can make the difference between making it that much harder or potentially that much lighter. And I thought it was just very profound and I've been thinking about it for the past couple hours. I love that, man. That's so, he's so right. And I love that reflection from him because it kind of reframes it for us the whole concept of hard and easy and i was actually just listening to a podcast yesterday um while i was driving home from somewhere and it was you know like this lady was talking about we have an addiction as human beings to make things hard even addiction to make things hard and this what she was talking about was to do with mainly our careers and our definition of success that we love to be caught up in the story that in order for things to you know for other people to praise us or for validation that we need to hold it up like a trophy that it was hard and she basically just debunked that myth and just said like we've been told by interviewing ceos and this and this and this all throughout our world that in order to do something good you it, like it needs to be hard but her whole thing now is that that's just such a lie and a story we tell ourselves like if it can be hard it can be easy so why not just choose things that are easy and that doesn't mean you're lazy or you're you're just choosing not to do things hard <laughs> And she said, we just so we get so obsessed with the validation that comes from saying, oh, it was so hard, you know, and but if we just break out of that story and that comes back to my thing of being like mindful, I think any, you know, like any good thing that we, uh, sorry, anything that we do that we could, you know, deem successful, we all have a different definition of that, right? it should be effortless. It should come from a place of ease because when it's hard and we're trying, I feel like we're using the wrong energy to try and get things achieved. You know, it could come from a place of desperation or fear that I'm not going to do it, you know, but if it's coming from ease, then it's coming from grace. Then it's coming from heart love. And I think that was really, it was really eye opening to me. Like, and I started looking at things that I, did myself and i was like man yeah i do i make a lot of things hard just so i can tell people that it was hard but like why it's just because we've been told that that's the way you get pats on the back but you know i think we're also so scared to say things are easy because people might say oh you're privileged you're lazy you're whatever it is but successful things can be easy 
Can you give us give us a taste of something if you could ground that into something you've discovered over the past bit and how that's played out for you because yeah. I know that I fantasize about these films you've made and I think about all the moving parts and all the stages and the steps and the time lead up and production post production and, and like doesn't sound easy so you know on the other hand I totally get what you're saying and and I see in the community of people who stutter, I see among the professional community, um, the magic is when we get into that flow state and it's not because we're pushing, it's because we feel like we've, we've, we've somehow plugged into some, some flow, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't become, it's not hard paddling, it's kind of like really surfing the waves and that's greatness right there. So I was just wondering, I could share, but I'd love to hear you know, where that comes up for you, how you've seen that play out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think if you wanted to talk in terms of like me making first day or even the last piece I did in New Zealand, like when I was in my element directing those with the actors or um, all the people who stutter, like it wasn't a job. I was like, just in a state of, you know, like being, I, I wasn't having to think about anything. It was literally just almost like I wasn't in control and my mouth was opening and things were coming out. And it was just like, I, you know, I knew what I needed to do. And it was so easy. I didn't need to use any part up here. You know, of course I was like calling on experiences and you know, there was, some things involved where I had to be involved in logistics and communicating, but even that came from a place of ease because it was, it was so interwoven into the person that I am that I didn't actually have to think about like what I wanted to say, like, 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 it, like it just came out, you know? because it was, yeah, and it was, it was easy. You know, that stuff is easy for me. And I look at other times in my life where, you know, I've been trying to get, you know, like a movie made for the past like four years. Um, and I try so hard, I have tried so hard to get it made and talk to people and get it, you know, and that's part of it, but it was so much effort to try and to almost like force my hand over um like that i had this audacity that i could control everything um and i guess the antithesis of that is when we drop control we're no longer scared because we can just like let things happen like it's like that trust that whatever will work out will work out and i think you know like that was the difference between working on first day and the project in new zealand is that there was no grasp or control from me. It was just a full on surrender. And I wasn't even using my mind. It was just like, Oh, I'm in this. Like I am this, you know, it was like a full on embodiment. And I think like that was, yeah, that was the difference. Victoria Wiggins from the UK, yeah. mom of our good, uh, rock star friend sam wiggins oh sam is an absolute rock star is that's she right oh she is and she dropped a comment and i was thinking about i have a thought as a as a guide on the path but i'm not the uh hollywood movie star that you are so she said that sam's an aspiring actor and model and i was thinking about how we could offer him because he's you know this awesome kid he's just about to go into high school um, how we could offer him some wisdom, like a little further down the road, some perspective and what you just said, right? That it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be about pushing and schwitzing, you know, finding, finding what's enough and surrendering. And at the same time, trying to make things happen, right? Trying to get a break. And obviously you got to put yourself out there, which takes a little effort. Um, but at the same time, yeah. So I was just wondering if you could riff on that, because I know she's listening and she could pass it forward to him and Tom Sharstein is, is doing his early morning routine. There's one person you could expect to wake up at this hour. It's Tom. 
Uh, just a quick plug, I was gonna do it anyway, but Sam is the chairman, if I'm not mistaken, of the youth committee of the World Stuttering Network. And Tom Scharstein is the rock star of the World Stuttering Network. They have an incredible stutter fest coming up. And you're looking at two of the, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 speakers that are gonna be speaking through that time. Uh, it's gonna be an amazing event. So check out the World Stuttering Network and big shout out to Tom uh, for all of his efforts over the past months to put that together and everything else that he's doing. So yeah, so a thought for Sam or any young person out there who's, who's trying to make something happen, they're trying to make a break. And on the other hand, you know, as you were saying, the, the greatness is not achieved through making it complicated and making it through pushing. So what would you offer as a, as kind of some insight? Yeah. Well, first of all, Tom, what's up? Love you. Nice to have you here. And Victoria, I don't know you, but you're probably awesome because your son is like what Udi said, a rock star. He's awesome. I love, 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 love what he has to say and his bravery and courage is just so awesome. Um, I would just interject and say I've met and hung out with Victoria, at least on Zoom. And uh, she's that and more. It's no accident. You know, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. Um, yeah. I would say for any young person, you know, it's a really good one is I think go with your heart, no matter what your heart is your ultimate guide. Like your heart is an electromagnetic field. If we want to talk about it like that. Like it is three times more powerful than your brain. It, it stretches three meters from your body. It is um, such a guide and so um, it's just got so much knowledge, your heart. So I would say trust your heart is a big one. And I'd also say don't worry about what others think of you along the way because they're only there for a step of the way, not the whole way. Um, and I would say I spent my childhood uh worrying a lot about how others were perceiving me you know and that that's you know that takes effort that's exhaustion and that's taking your power away from your health so i would just say if you want to do something that's you, you just give yourself the permission to do it don't worry about anyone else like i know it's really hard to not take things personally and how others perceive you but i would just say like you know, don't worry about other people because they're worrying about their story that they're caught up in. Whereas we're always thinking the whole time that they care about you and they're worrying about you, but really they're just worried about what others think of them most likely, you know? So, you know, I think I'm still working on that now at my age, you know, like it's, it's a hard one, but I would say that's one thing I would say, just rock it and own whatever you do and people, are not you know not everyone can like you and it's exhausting to try and make everyone like you and that's what i mm. did and that takes effort but you know what doesn't take any effort just loving yourself and doing what your heart wants you to do it takes and no effort. and it takes less effort and people love it people want to see that authenticity they're drawn to it when you're running around trying to get people to be attracted or to yeah. say, oh yeah, come to my place, or yeah, I want to be part of this. Uh, people feel it. There's something there that just, it's filtered, it's a little plastic. When you start doing you, Sam, or whoever you are listening, uh, you just start to become a magnet to people that are that are truly connecting to what you're really all about. And guess, guess who else just dropped a little comment, Cody? Ooh. Guess who else? Me. Down the block, down the block, Cody, Phyllis. Oh, no way. Hey, Phyllis. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a whole fest here. We got Florida, we got New Zealand, we got UK. So I'll share my, my, my two cents uh, for please? Sam and any other young people. Oh. No, I said, please, I'd love to hear. Yeah, here's my thought. Phyllis got me so excited with her comment. I lost my train of thought for a second, but it's going to come. It's coming. Oh, I got it. I tell young people all the time because look, 
this is bigger than stuttering, right? And that's kind of like this whole idea of the title here, transcending stuttering, is that on the one hand, those people who stutter or love people who stutter, uh, it's important to look beyond the stutter and not just hyper fixate on the stutter. But it also means that within stuttering, for me, a person who doesn't stutter, who's a professional dedicated and caring, I, I, uh, I become stronger, wiser, more courageous through my interaction with people who stutter. So it's not just about the work. It's not just about being a therapist or a pathologist. And then even bigger than that, I think that stuttering and the lived experience has so much to offer the world in terms of perspective in, in courage and what it means to really be a human because there are universal experiences and challenges out there. But what I tell young people, whether they stutter or not, I often meet people who have certain gifts and talents and they also have certain things that don't come as easy. Maybe they're not so quick and easy to socialize with others. Maybe reading is, is not as quick and easy. It wasn't for me. Uh, I was in high school and I was like, hey, Stevie, who's one of my best friends till today, how long did it take you to read that, uh, that textbook page in the science book? He's like, yeah, about a minute. I'm like, okay, I think something's up. It took me like two minutes and all I remember are the pictures. Um, you know, so, or maybe it's uh, harder with spelling or maybe it's harder with speech or maybe your voice gives out or maybe you're not great at basketball or soccer. And that's like really important in your, in your group of friends. So I think for Sam and for others, I think it's so important to send the message like this you should continue to cultivate and nurture the things you're really good at and, yeah. and kind of riffing on Cody, the things that you gravitate to, things you know you connect to, things that you know you feel awesome when you're doing it. It might be code. It might be making movies. It might be writing poetry. Cultivate those things and all the other stuff, like playing soccer, if that's not your strength or getting along with you, you got to be good enough at it or reading or anything, you gotta be good enough. You don't have to be the best. So like trying to be perfect or the best at those things is going to be a very frustrating, exhausting and probably wasteful experience. Be good enough because once you get through those first 12 years of schooling, then you start to be able to make choices for yourself and you get to dive into the things that you care the most about. You need to get through that and it's important. And I believe there's true value to having that well-rounded, uh, education and whatnot, but I think we're killing a lot of creativity and a lot of special people by trying to get them to be the best at everything. And if you want to see an awesome video, we have it on our website or it's gone around the internet. It's called uh, Animal School, where like all the animals are brought to school and they all have to get an A in swimming, in flying, in jumping, and running. And the kangaroo is like trying to learn how to climb while well, he stinks. And in trying to learn how to climb and use his four legs, he yeah. like, you know, he gets sore and he's no longer the best jumper and the squirrel and all these and the, the, the I won't kill you on the punchline, but the punchline is the bumblebee. I'll just leave it there. But Sam and for all the people out there, if you're really good at something, go for it and, and, and know what you're really good at and recognize the things that come harder and just get good enough at those. And then as life goes on, once you get past those teenage high school years, you just got to get through that because then you have a chance to really dive into the things that you care about the most um, and the other yeah. things a little bit less let go but at least you gave it a shot you know you got to give everything a shot so we digress because the awesome people that showed up but Cody what did you learn about the film because from the first film to the second film a lot of differences you went back to New Zealand uh, you went into not using actors but like real young people who stutter, um, and it was just a different scope of project. And I know that for you, there was a lot of things that hit you and that you experienced and also facilitated through that. What do you, what do you wanna share? Yeah, it was really interesting actually. Um, so it's, it all started really, I reached out to the organization, start um because i wanted to um start some community groups back home for adults and teenagers um because obviously i'd experienced how healing and um important they are on the journey uh of stuttering um and yeah, so I reached out to the organization start and they were like, oh, we've been, we've had the money to, uh, 
you know, we've had the money to make a piece, um, like a, you know, like a resource for ages and we just couldn't have found, uh, sorry, you know, we've been looking for like the right director for a year and a half and, um, you know, we've interviewed people and they just don't get it because they're not people who stutter. And then they said, are you back home in New Zealand? We loved your PSA. And I said, well, yeah, I am. And then, it, you know, they kind of just said, well, would you like to make a video? And I just said, oh, well, yeah, it's, of course, you know, of course, like that would be amazing. So it was just kind of like the universe just kind of lined it up for me, uh, you know, again, no effort at all. I was asking about something completely different. And then presented on a silver platter was a thing that was really easy and really an amazing experience. I mean, I got to meet how many, uh, about 14 young people who stutter and about four or five adults. And honestly, the just sponging off the young kids was just incredible. Like, um, I got to run a pre-workshop with them where I just got to bring out my like inner child, run some drama games and some workshops and get to know them and shake off all that, you know, all the cobwebs before we get in front of the camera and like, um, yeah, just kind of gain trust between each other, you know, before we go down a deep dive into like what stuttering means for, for each person. Um, so that was really, yeah. You know, we've done a lot of things together, Cody, about everything possible that you can do on Zoom, you and me. Um, but we haven't done a film shoot together. What would it look like to shake off the cobwebs? I would love to know what you do with people to kind of get those, get those whatever, ants in the pants or tightness kind of out of there. Yeah, yes. so tell us what that looks like with you. Yeah, we, um, uh, what did we do? We played team building games. We played games where we did these weird name introductions with, um, you know, like crazy noises, like, Wah! you know, we were just being kids, you know, we were like acting like animals together, like, yeah, dogs, pigs, like what, you know, like we were just shaking off the cobwebs, being kids, you know, like I, I was a kid with them. It was wicked. Um, you know, like I was, yeah, it was, it was cool. Like it was really fun um so yeah we we were doing these yeah like crazy name games um and uh yeah just i think what we were really doing was just showing each other that like we trusted each other with these crazy like you know things um and you know i really wanted to create an environment where i was like on their level like i wasn't like a teacher or anything like I was just a kid that was curious, you know, and I think that was really important um, to, you know, getting them to open up and also just stuttering in front of them too, you know, like introducing myself and stuttering and interacting with them. A couple of the kids uh, I learned through their parents hadn't actually interacted with a person who stutters in New Zealand but they'd been going to speech th therapy for a few years. Um, so that was quite revelatory for them. And, you know, again, I wasn't trying to do anything. I was just being myself and, and they had a revelation in that. And that was, you know, a really good lesson for me. Um, so yeah, I got to be a kid. We got to be kids together. And then when it got to the actual interviewing part of it, you know, I was, I think I read the questions for the first, you know, um, a person I interviewed and then it kind of all just came from the heart, you know, like I, I, I knew what questions need to, um, uh, we needed to ask stuff like that, but I was kind of healing into the energy and what they were kind of willing to open up about and not willing to open up about. And, um, yeah, I kind of tapped into this like kid energy again. And it felt like a bit of like a reconciliation, like with my young boy and a child. And um, it was like he'd literally come home to where this all kind of started and where he was dealing with things that w w were a little difficult at times. And like this whole process 
and hearing from these kids and watching their eyes light up in front of the camera like you care about what i have to say of course we do and you know it was like i was giving that to my inner child and young boy at the same time as they were giving it it was almost like it was coming through them to me and i was reflecting it back with you know so it was like this beautiful kind of mirror thing. mirror channels energy flowing what I love your saying is, um, I think, and it's a good segue maybe, then we can go back and forth and there's more great people dropping in. I don't wanna acknowledge some and not others, but it's so good to see so many great people and Cody, a lot of people appreciating the wisdom bombs and the honesty and the creativity and, and just whatever we can share here. So thanks for doing this. Um, what I loved what you said is, you know, sometimes, sometimes you need someone else to light your fire. Sometimes you just need a little space to be yourself. You don't need someone else to ignite, to create, to push, to introduce. You, you just need to give yourself the space or for someone else to carve the space to just be, you know? And I think that's something for all of us. If we're parents or individuals or therapists or in any sort of relationship, sometimes, you, you know, someone needs you to introduce something something new, a new food, a new sport, a new film, a new restaurant, whatever. And other times you just need someone to give you the space to be. And like through that, there can be something exciting, exhilarating and cathartic, even though it's actually less, it's less is more. It's just a place to be. And I think I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that and, and kind of like mindfulness as, as a practice, as an exercise that is obviously super valuable. If, if you aren't into it yet, I wanted to just give people who are not aware or not into it a chance to kind of hear what it means. It's not just a fad um, and like what it means to you and how people could dip their toes in it. And certainly that very same podcast that I mentioned today, uh, the Tim Ferriss show and this episode that I mentioned at the beginning of today, uh, he leads off with a bit of an advertisement, but it's also his own practice of using this app called Headspace which is incredible and gives people a chance to do this on their own. But what I love about it is it's not uh, exclusive to other experiences and opportunities. It's not exclusive to supportive communities. It's not exclusive to therapy and professionally led experiences, but it's something that you can tap into and it doesn't cost a penny. It's you learning what you can do and give to yourself to kind of, so if you could share your, your take on it, just a personal reflection on what mindfulness is and what it's been for you, how it's how it's kind of influenced your life. It's a really good question. I think mindfulness for me has been like a rediscovery of everything that I was looking for out there, whether it be validation, acceptance, um, love, um, anything is actually all in here it's all inside of us it's in our cells it's in our hearts it's in our dna it's in our blood it's in it's in the spaciousness between every sing, every single thing in our body like there is a lot of space in our body we don't realize that our body is constantly just transferring energy oxygen everything there is a lot of space between our organs, our rib cages and everything. And I think like what the key to mindfulness, I think is that I've learned is that it's this journey from outer to inner, you know, we have a lot inside of us that can tell us like, you know, everyone says always, you know, I like, listen to your gut. Well, that's your intuition, you know, like, um, and there's all sorts of stuff, you know, with mindfulness and it can, so, it, you know, there's many tools, you know, like in mindfulness. So you can access, uh, you know, breathing is a big one for me. Breath work, like a daily breath work prep, you know, like a daily breath work practice to regulate my nervous system. Just to people, clarify, is that breath work related to fluency? Because a lot of people think of. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's breath work. I'd like you to just riff on that as a, you know. Oh, breath work is not related to fluency. This is breath work that is uh, 
just linked to the regulation of your nervous system with no outcome to any speech at all. This is just literally learning how to breathe, like slowing it down and regulating our inner state from a stress response to a relaxation response. And why this is really helpful is because being people who study, you probably notice that in moments of anxiety or um, where there's a lot of attention on you or you're in like in what I call you know, like the anticipation mode where you're anticipating bad things or events or repeats that could happen. Your nervous system is really off balance. That's when your heart starts to race, your blood starts to boil. That's all the inner, like the inner body getting out of control. And then for me anyway, I can only speak for me is that's when I lose control. That's when I start acting from a place of, oh, I remember this, like even though I'm 29 and it could be happening, oh, then I go back to that 12 year old boy that got laughed at in class when he was trying to read aloud. And all of that starts implementing and copy and pasting on this present moment experience. But if you have control of your breath, you can teach your body to actually not go to that stress place and stay regulated. Now it takes a lot of practice, but the a, the breath is you know, like one of our portals that we've been given by our creator or ho however you want to call it. It's a portal into that inner world. And that's what, you know, like the mindfulness is. So when we're in those stressful situations, breath is a way to keep us in the present moment right now and not to jump to the past when we're just trying to like regurgitate things that have happened to us. Like think of it as an anchor. It plants us like right here. And if we're connected to our breathing, then we can only be right here because breathing is presence. If you're noticing your breathing, you are, you have to be here. You can't be in your mind. That's just, you know, so that's what, you know, that's one of the really big tools of mindfulness that I try to use is breathing, um, breath work. And there's many different <clears throat> work you can look up online. Um, yeah. And it's really, you know, really incredible. And then there's, um, you know, like the meditation, which I think is a really, really great tool. I'll say one thing about the breath work, if I may. Yeah, please. People, you know, I find uh, if, if you have any sort of, as Cody said, you tune in and you realize when you're uneasy, when you're stressed out about something or you go in for a big test or a big interview or you miss the bus or you feel like you're going to be late for this appointment, if you just stop for a second and you check your, your breath, it's another one of these things on your dashboard because you can notice your breath might be more shallow and more oh. rapid. And oh. um, what I think is a lot of people, when, when other people around them, like let's say you care about a young person or a, a, a partner or whatever, they say like, listen, don't stress out, relax, take a deep breath. Now, telling someone who's uptight to relax, probably the least helpful thing you can imagine. <laughs> telling someone else to take a deep breath, whether they stutter or not, also probably not that helpful. But what I love about what Cody was sharing is, you know, it's not easy to take control of your mood. You know, that's very high level stuff, like to just take an anger that's flowing through you and just flip it on a dime. But there are things you can do that are physical that can kind of reverb and influence your emotions. So it's very hard to be angry if you force a smile. It's yeah. very hard to continue to be revved up if you slow down and take much deeper breaths and just don't focus on relaxing, just focus on your breath. And then there's this you know, trickle down effect. So I think it's very powerful when you wanna try to change your state, as, as Cody says, use this word, it's a portal. It's a portal of something that you can access at any time, much easier than changing your mood, but it's a portal of something that you can access. And by accessing it, it's not just about your breath. It, it resets your whole state, including moods and other things. Yeah, and then neurologically and otherwise, everything functions better, including your state, your readiness to go to sleep, your ability to connect, your ability to be yourself, maybe your speech, but like, being grounded and your neurological state and your mood state and your state of mind all impacts your, your best and 
not best functioning. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. It's a, yeah. Echo everything that you say for sure. And if you're ever panicked or anxious or, you know, there's a really easy breathing technique you can use to ground down, which is, a uh, um, so it's an inhale through the nose for a count of four. So it's a very slow, like, and, and, you know, like keep in mind when you're panicked, you're probably like you said, going to be breathing from the chest where it's very, very shallow. You want to bring it down to the abdomen, to the belly and hold. And then after you inhale for four, you want to hold at the top for two and just hold there and then really slowly release for a count of six and then do that four or five times. You'll be so calm and oh, and um, it's, so it's in the nose, out the mouth. Honestly, it's free. It takes under a minute or a couple of minutes, depending on how slow you do it. Like you can't not be calm if you do that. And I know, you know, this is very tricky to do if you're in the middle of a conversation, you know, yeah, very tricky, but you know, I like, a great yeah. thing to do as a daily practice, a great thing to do. If you know, you got something coming up, great thing to do. If you've got an interview or a test, go to the bathroom and in the stall in the bathroom, just do this breathing thing, you know, or go to the staircase and do a, a flight of steps and then just kind of, but that yeah. gets this stuff out of your system. And as Cody said, I think the secret is, not to push it. It goes back to what we said before. Don't push it. Be like, am I calm yet? Am I, am I, I'm not calm yet. You know, just forget about that. Let it come. Use the, 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 the exercise, whatever it is. And we're getting to, I guess, the mantras of, of meditation and things, but the breathing, just focus on the breathing and let the other things just kind of happen. If you focus on like pushing it, you're, you're like guaranteed. I'm trying to think of nothing. I'm trying to think of what am I supposed to be thinking about? I'm trying to think of nothing. You know, how do I, no, just, yeah literally just notice your belly go up and down that's all you need to do because then automatically shut the mind down that's all you need to do is take your awareness from thoughts to belly just notice it go up and down that's all you need to do it's really that tom tom sharstein is is giving great props and i appreciate it very very much and trisha of course and the world study network friends but uh we're not at the level yet that we have sponsors headspace is not a sponsor but i'll just make one more shameless plug for headspace they even have such meditations like when you're feeling really in a moment of acute stress a quickie you know like a three minute reset so you can do exercises of mindfulness proactively to kind of integrate into your into your lifestyle and into your practice of habits you can also use it as a way to manage and respond to different situations and it goes back to what we said at the beginning how you respond to something can make it lighter or how you respond to something can make it heavier so if you let yourself get caught up fully in negative feelings, low feelings, overwhelmed feelings, dark feelings, uh, it's not that you don't deserve to have those feelings, but you can make it heavier. Or you can have a way of processing those same feelings in a way that gets lighter, which I think is so powerful. So yeah. what was the next thing about the meditation you were going to share? Because I think it's very uh, interesting and relevant. Yeah. So the other tool is, you know, like meditation, I develop, you know, like I use a daily meditation practice, um, really good for teaching your mind, uh, and your nervous system to shut down in terms of not turn off, but come down to that relaxation level out of stress. And what you're doing, the more that you do it, it's like a muscle, it builds, you know, at the start, when you meditate for a lot of people, there's a lot of mind activity. I call, you know, like the monkey mind and it feels very uncomfortable because we're not used to stillness. We're not used to silence or we're not used to looking in. We're always looking out and it can be quite intimidating for people, but I would say that intimidation is all BS. It's all mind made stuff to try to protect you from evolution. And really what you need to do is go on the other side of that and work through it because on the other side is like this freedom that you've would have never encountered before, you know, and it's just like anything in life. When resistance meets you, 
quite often the freedom is pushing through it, not against it, but through it. Um, and that, you know, like delicious release on the other side of it is just, you look back and you're like, oh, that was really worth it. Um, but you know, you know, like meditation again, is not a thing. Like, I just want to be clear with people. It's not a thing where you're like, oh, I need to do something. I need to work something out. This is like a, you know, this is, again, I think the word here is observation. We're going into a state where we're just observing what's going on. We can have stuff that comes in and out of our mind, thoughts and stuff like that. As long as we stay as the observer, you know, you're cultivating this observing muscle. And then that goes, you know, I take it from there to journaling. And, you know, this is another thing that I use every day is that, or not every day, but I like to observe and I have done in the past, like observe habits around stuttering. So like when do I find myself hiding or becoming small and starting to observe that and what triggers that? And without judgment, I'm just writing these down just so I can look at the patterns and then I can say, okay, what's some ways I can work through that, you know? Or what is this trying to teach me? Like where, like what, what is making me uncomfortable in those moments? You know, what is driving my behaviors? Is it, I'm scared that I'm going to be laughed at? Is it that, um, I'm scared that, um, I won't be accepted for who I am. And then you can start to see, oh, wow. Just through the power of observation. When I'm like in those moments, like, you know, uh, you know, one that comes up for me a lot um, is that um, I will get laughed at, you know, um, you know, or other people will be uncomfortable um, and or, like, you know, as if that's my responsibility, like I have no control over that, but I, you know, I do hide my voice sometimes because there's the thought that go through that I observe, um, you know, like, oh, what's going to happen? Uh, how are they going to react? And by creating mindfulness, you're creating that space where you can look at, like, how is my program running? Because we're all programmed, right? And then, you know, the whole thing with mindfulness is not, you know, like judging yourself for running that way, because the programs, like programs are built on computers they're built to run away, like a certain way, right? But what you can do with mindfulness is you can start changing the program where you can rewire the program to say, oh, I'd like to upgrade my program. You know, like again, not from a place that I'm not good enough, but from a place of like, this would serve me better, you know? And that's where mindfulness can create this um, kind of growth and evolution a little bit if you're not sold on it yet contact cody privately but um you know anyone i think if you talk to five people that have found practices of mindfulness to be helpful to them ask them practically what they do and what what is opened up as a result of it and i find it so helpful because i think some people are attracted to the term because it's so trendy others are repelled from it because it's so trendy but i think when you get down to it and you talk to people that actually use it you discover that it's it's life-changing you know and it means different things and looks different ways to different people i think um i think of two thoughts and then i'll unfortunately for the late start i apologize we had a tech difficulty but we're gonna give cody some final thoughts and then we'll come back uh, next week, but you can catch this. I'll tell you where you can catch the rest of this with the session, the, the show notes and the podcast on transcending stuttering. I would say what I'm hearing from you, Cody, which I think is so important today, we talk a lot about holding space for others, you know, and thinking about how do we create safe space? I think mindfulness in some ways is finding a way to hold space for ourselves yeah. and being safe space for ourselves with all the pleasant, unpleasant, comfortable, uncomfortable, but not running and not suppressing, but just being able to be in the presence of ourselves and hold ourselves. And as you said, what that does, it's not a, it's not a torture, torturous experience. It's, it's a muscle of 
of patience and tolerance and love and care and holding of self, which opens up the opportunity to see what's working for me, what's not. What are some things that are some trends and habits and cycles I'm caught up in? And I'd like to slow them down. Uh, so this has been eye-opening for me. I'll make two comments of, of suggestion and then leave it to you to take us home. First of all, if you're a speech language pathologist, check out today. Stuttering Foundation is having a free workshop with Kristen Camilla of how to bring mindfulness into speech therapy. If you don't catch it today, you can look on the Stuttering Foundation. They have an incredible library of resources where you can pay a small fee and access incredible top-notch world-class content. I would also say welcome you to like and subscribe to the uh, Transcending Stuttering podcast. Your subscriptions and your feedback and sharing it really helps spread conversations like this one with Cody to go further. And lastly, we launched, we launched the registration, early registration for cohort three for speech language pathologists for the Transcending Stuttering community. So you can check it out uh, schneiderspeech.com slash TSA, and obviously some really special pricing. There are limited seats for that launch pricing. So if you know speech language pathologists that want to check it out, it's for the summer. It's going to be awesome. And with that, I'll kick it back to New Zealand, to Cody, to take us home with some final thoughts for today, for this round. Yeah, I don't really have any last thoughts, but I'd like to share a story. Um, this was a story that happened about maybe four or five days ago, I was at a, actually I was at like a, um, a conscious festival in New Zealand, which had a lot of workshops to do with like, um, health and wellness, yoga, meditation, you know, like mindfulness, there was music there, there was everything. And, um, I was doing a workshop and it was a play workshop. So it was a lot of just like being goofy, you know, really tapping into that inner child and just like, I mean, we acted like animals for like 10 minutes with stra like a hundred strangers. It was beautiful. Um, but anyway, after I went up to a, a, a guy and he had a really cool poncho on and, you know, I was just talking to him and then a little th thought sprang into my head. I was like, oh, I noticed he had a little bit of a s s s stutter on one or two words and it was like just small enough where I didn't like bring it up and then um, we kept talking and then I s s stuttered over a few words and he stopped me and he said, hey, um, you know, if you don't mind me bringing up, I just noticed like, you know, I've been noticing you've s s stuttered a few times and I was like, oh yeah, I'm a person who's Hutters. And, you know, he said, no, you know, like, and then I said, oh, I noticed that you, you had a little stutter too. Um, and, you know, he was like, oh, well, I did. That's really weird. But I did. And I said, well, but I noticed it. <laughs> um, and he's like, oh, yeah, I did. Um, you know, but I got through it and I overcame it. And he says, you can too. And this was very triggering for me because it brought up a lot of the stories. Well, actually it brought up a few things. Like it brought up like I wasn't being fully seen in that moment for sure. And it brought up this whole threat like it was like a, yeah, it was like a threat to my ego that holds on to this part of myself, the identity, the person who stutters. And this guy was threatening to just obliterate it in front of my eyes, you know, and he kept proceeding to say, you know, you don't have a st stutter, right? He just says, you just have some disfluency and you can get through it. You just need to like, do public speaking and you need to go to this course called landmarks that I did. And he, you know, I just let him talk cause I was just kind of flabbergasted and I just kind of, I, you know, I was just curious. So I just kept asking questions and I was a little defensive. I'm not going to lie because it kind of was just like, Oh, like he was like telling me that I didn't have something that I clearly did have. And, um, you know, he said to me, yeah, I used to stutter really badly, you know, but listen to me now. He's like, I've given like speeches where people clap me, 
and you know told me i'm a really powerful speaker and then he told me a story he said you know i went to this um group called landmarks which is you know like a public speaking thing and you know the lady who was running it told me to introduce myself so i introduced myself to the crowd the little crowd in the room and he said hey i'm alec or you know like uh, i'm you know whatever his name was and i'm a person who's the uh, i i i i you know i, I have a stutter and he kind of just said something like oh of course or something and then he was like what and she says yeah i thought you would say that and then she said look around the room and so he looked around the room and a few people were on their phones and stuff not really paying attention she says see who cares no one gives a shit you just need to get over it like no one gives a shit about that so just get over it we're live so just uh it's early morning there may be some underage audience so we can't bleep it out that's okay but no one gives a you know yeah, yeah, yeah. totally um yeah and then he just said that he was like oh okay and then so he just you know kind of tip you know kind of kept talking and um then yeah he said he did this program did like a bunch of public speak speeches and then the way he was talking about it was really interesting it was like when i spoke fluently i felt powerful like that was the way he was like it was almost like and like i could detect all the stuff like inbuilt into all the messages he'd received and he'd taken on externally was that i'm ashamed to speak with a stutter so i need to you know and then when he got the you know like the messages of wow that was a good speech it was only when he was fluent and i said to him you know do you think you would have been any less successful if you did give one of those speeches with a stutter and he just said like something I like oh well no you know why do it with that when you can do you know yeah you know, like when i can just own my voice and be fluent and honestly man it was really really hard to hear this perspective for me like really really challenging probably one of the most challenging things i've heard in a while because he not only did he tell me that i didn't have a stutter he says that you can be like me and you can get over this so it was really difficult for me to hear and he clearly was like yes he was fluent but i also could detect he had a stutter so it's you know it's kind of like you know really deep down i knew he still had a stutter he's just worked out how to manage it but it makes him feel more comfortable in his own power where he's at like now and he just wanted me he wanted me to know that that was possible for me too and i went on to tell him i said man, I just own my stutter now. I feel like, you know, I feel powerful in my own way doing what I'm doing. And then he just kept saying, yeah, man, well, it doesn't need to be that way. But, you know, basically, and I just said to him at the end, I said, you know what I think, man, I think you're just owning it in a completely different way than I am. And I said, that's okay. I said, you're just, you're, you, you know, you're finding power in a way that I'll probably never be able to find power or I'm not really interested in finding power in. But like I said, you're no more wrong or right than I am, you know? Like, I just think we have different views on this and that's okay. And he just couldn't wrap his head around that. You know, he was like, oh, that's, you know, that's kind of- Not yet, yeah. not yet. And I think, he, you know, what a beautifully messy story. And so I just want to leave off on a messy story. I just want to leave it messy because things are not clean. Yeah, I'm still you know? confused by it, to be honest, man. And it's still I love it. Yeah, and I'm not going to propose that I can clean it up. I, I love that you put that out there. I love that you were honest yeah. and that it really irked you and shook you up. Because I think a lot of people, again, look at us and say, oh, this guy has their stuff together. You know, this guy, this guy's unflappable. So I love that you said you were flabbergasted, flummoxed, yeah. thrown off. And <clears throat> let's just leave it there. The only, the only offer that I would put out there is I think the world would be a much better place if all of us would be mindful that we not project our stuff, our stories and our things on other people. So what I'm hearing in that story is like, I love the where you got to at the stage you got it to it in the chapter of this evolving story. You said to him, look, it seems like you're owning it and it's just looks different to you. And, and I own it a different way. And maybe the two are okay. Like we can agree to disagree and agree to, to roll with it differently. The problems arise when I tell you how you should be owning your stuff 
And then you even start thinking, oh, this guy, I got him figured out. He's insecure. This is a story that makes him feel better. Like all this thinking about what other people are thinking or should be thinking, that's where we get into a much stickier world. But if we can all hold space for ourselves, hold ourselves, have that mindfulness of where we're at and what's good and healthy for us without a feeling of pushing it on someone else, but like offering it. And if people jive with it, great. And if not, that's cool. And it brings us back to Sam, you know, and it brings us back to the beginning. Just do your thing and, and go with what feels right, not what someone else tells you is right. But yeah. trust your gut as parents, as adults, as kids. No one knows you better than you. And no one could be you better than you. So just do you, because otherwise you're going to be a second rate version of someone else's expectations. So we'll just leave on that messy thought. But I'm sorry we were late. I'm so excited and grateful that you took the time, Cody. I'm so excited for the people that woke up early. And for those that are still with us or listening, please share this because this was a really, really, really great candid chat. And I hope we'll, we'll have many more to follow. But I'll see you soon at the World Stuttering Network uh, Stutter Fest, maybe at the National Stuttering Association in Austin, maybe at Friends in Colorado. Check it out. These places are having real live in-person conferences this summer. And if you can't get to any of those, stay connected online in any way you can. Be part of a community, be connected. And if we can be there for you in the Transcending Stuttering community or Cody can be there for you with everything he's doing, connect, you know, drop us a DM. Looking forward.